we go. Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. To say that the global economy is imploding is literally an understatement. That is correct. I talked about this last week where we're going through different cycles and I thought there would not be a better person to have on right now than Patrick Karim. And we're going to talk about charts and let's talk about some bad charts. Patrick, how you doing? Hi. Hi, Mr. Ninja. Uh, always great to, to reconnect. Yeah. Yeah. It's been awesome. But to be honest with you, what's even more awesome is what's going on in the charts. And you have a very interesting way of looking at a chart, 10 different angles. And I absolutely love it. And before this interview, you were showing me some. And we were looking at what the Fed did just merely in the spring and how compared to you know, past rate hike cycles, this is incredible. Can we jump in and just talk about that right yeah. away? Yeah, that's it. Because- this as a chart trader, I always try to find the evidence. I'm like a scientist trying to observe the data, the actual data on a chart. And then after that, I could probably try to derive uh, some narratives and try to explain it instead of taking a narrative and trying to force feed on the chart. So here I created what I call a serv system debt serviceability indicator. It's essentially the total public debt of the US multiplied times the Fed fund rate. So my logic was, you could have a high Fed fund rate and low debt. That's fine. Like we had back in the in the 70s, you know, high Fed fund rate in the 80s, we had super high Fed fund rate. But look, the debt was so much lower that you'll see on this chart, it wasn't that historically now with hindsight, it wasn't that high. So they could have went probably even higher before breaking anything. As people as like as crazy as it was in the 80s, people think, oh, the, the interest rates was breaking everything. I think they could have went even higher because the debt was so low. The GDP was like still doing good. But now look look what happened here, guys. In 2000, we're starting to hit some ceilings. So in 2000, the, the debt kept climbing up. The rates were high enough. So when you plot, multiply both those together, it was uh, unbearable. And then we had the, the dot-com bubble. There was an implosion. So there had to be a cleansing of that. And each of these, these the green overlay guys, are the, the, um, the recessions. So every time these debt saturated levels get too high, there's a cleansing recession. Either the Fed fund rates, they get cut or there's debt liquidation, debt disappears, or it's a combination of the two, right? To lower that uh, that multiplied uh, outcome. If you don't so mind me jumping in real quick, yeah. Patrick, I want to explain to people real clearly. So you can see the uh, time when the debt hit those high levels in 2001, and we we had that sell-off, right? Then you see, obviously, in 2008, as it picked back up, and then we sold off. The federal funds rate was lowered both of those times to deal with that uh, turn down. But look at the one next to it, the one that happened in 2019. Now I want people to make sure that they understand how very serious this was. When I sold my house in 2018 and I bought Bitcoin and silver, the reason why I did it was because of that red line. Debt was getting so expensive, the rates were going higher and it was insustainable. But then a miracle happened, it sounds crazy, but something happened that put us all in our houses and closed the doors. And then you could see that drop sell off, that cleanse cycle. And that fixed that problem. I know it sounds crazy, but there is a reason why certain things in life happen. Now, let's talk about this uptick that started on the 1st of March, 2022. It's, uh, yeah, you're, you're so right, right? It's a cleansing. And that was a, a beautiful cleansing, right? It's yep. like- uh, Almost like it was done on purpose. Even if, the, even if the debt was sky high, rocket high, just the fact that they lowered the rates from wherever it was to practically zero, you have practically unlimited debt at this level. And this is where we had all these bubbles come popping up everywhere, you know, yep. to, to start pricing in that money. But as soon, because now the debt, the debt kept going up and up and up during this base, even if you had zero rates, as soon as they, there was one uptick in the rates, I think, like you said, in February or March, man, the multiplier, now it's crazy because the multiplier, every time they raise the rates, it's... It's not from a smaller debt that they had back here. It's from the debt, the, the crazy debt we have that they incurred since uh, 2020. Look where that line is. When I did this chart, it was back here a, a month ago. And with the latest rates that they just added on top, multiplied times the total debt, man, they don't even have to get more debt on the balance sheet. All they had to do was raise the rates. And look, it's sky high. It's yep. like we're higher levels than we were before we crashed in 2008. We're higher levels before we started 2008, before we crashed in the 2020, before we crashed in uh, 2001. Yep. Look, I don't know, man. I think they broke the system. I wrote that here, but 
this is a time bomb. It's like, yeah. it's broken. So to say that we are in that danger zone, that at any moment this thing can come crashing down is an understatement, right, Patrick? Yeah, and yeah. All, they, they have two, there's two ways to bring it down. Either there's total debt, uh, sovereign debt defaults, like the whole thing that you destroy the debt and the, that goes down, or yeah. the easy way is just lower the rates. Because if you lower the rates back to zero, this this line is just going to plummet down all the way down here. And what's going to happen? All these risk on assets, or at least silver, gold, you know, all that stuff is going to shoot up. And, so let's talk about shoot. those two scenarios. So one is just let everything collapse, right? Which would sort of make sense if you wanted to issue a new currency. But let's talk about that other side. If all of a sudden you lower rates, what is the outcome of that? Because to me, that's hyperinflation because that would expand the money supply even that much more because of easy credit and lending, correct? Yeah. It's going to be a redux of what we did in 2020. But there's one big element here that's different is now we have way more inflation that we had back in 2020 when they did, did the, the lowering of the rates. And if I could show you, if I could jump to one chart, let me yeah. just flip around. This is a huge difference. Back in 2020, we were right here. So this is the SPX divided by the producer price index, which is a great proxy for inflation because it's less uh, hedonics adjusted than the CPI. So this is a rising trend line. This SPX, well, wait a minute. Did you did you already change charts? Because it's still the same chart on my. Uh, sorry, sorry. No is worries. Yeah, it's either there's a lag or it didn't change at all. Okay, let me flip. Is it is it did it change? Nope. We're having technical issues. Stand by, everyone. It does blow me away as you're looking to change that, how uh, sharp that went up. That was absolutely mind-blowing since March. That's crazy. Now, yeah. now that it changed. Well, it's still the same. It's doing something, but it's still the same chart. Let's it go back like to the that. fact that I, that I flipped around. Yeah, because it went to a different screen. Well, let's do this because I want to talk about a couple more things while this charts up. And then we may do a different video on gold because to okay. me, there's no scenario where gold now does not go up, right? If the debt completely implodes, gold's going to be the safe haven for most industries, right? Or most uh, investors. Yeah. Well, gold gold tracks, and this is this is the where a lot of uh, mainstream narratives confuse a lot of people. Gold tracks your purchasing power. Yep. So purchasing power can go can change with a factor of things, but usually purchasing power is a function of inflation applied to the US dollar strength. Yeah. So you could have no inflation and US dollar strength going down and you're, you're losing purchasing power. Gold's gonna price that and go up. Yep. You could have US dollar going up but more inflation and gold's still gonna go up and price that in. So if ever we have US dollar strength and now we know the US dollar is like super skyrocket high, nosebleed high. As soon as there's weakness in the US dollar and drops down, in an inflationary environment, that your purchasing power is melting in yeah. gold, silver, oil, commodities, anything real, you know, is going to pri price that in, guys. And yes, this doesn't play out, guys, overnight. It's not daily volatility. My charts, you'll see these are 50, 60 year charts, but you want to be on the good side of these macro tidal waves. Traders have fun on daily charts, but somebody who's thinking long term, thinking about their kids, thinking about uh, their grandkids, we're, we're at these these insane levels where as soon as this unwinds the person power is going to get demolished on the way down because that's the only solution they have they've been repeating over and over it's the only way they they know how is destroying purchasing power so either they do it by creating more inflation or doing it by debasing their the us dollar but at the end of the at the end of the day the purchasing power has always been going down like yeah. for 80 years i did charts on momentum on purchasing power and top left to bottom right corner, it's uh, that's the only no thing they know how to do. Yep. And and something else I want to explain to people, because I don't know if you uh, brought it up, the yellow or orange line is the Fed funds rate. And I'd love to go back to back in 1992 to 94, when you saw the Fed funds rate very low, right? Which had hit actually that sort of support line of 142. See where, I, where, where in 1993, where that, that line was, the Fed funds ah. rate was super low. And what people don't realize, okay, you're all of them up. Do you see that? Oh, you've turned off the whole system. Uh, okay, I understand now what's happening. I was sharing the, um, I was sharing a different screen. That's why it wasn't moving. Gotcha. We'll stay Got on it. this real quick. Go back to okay. the 1993 
1992 area right there. Okay. The Fed funds rate was very low because we were coming out of of some other uh, economic turmoil and they had to lower that rate. But when they started to raise it right there in 1994, the reason why is because construction on new homes was exploding and they had to raise rates and to slow construction. They actually did some pretty crazy things that I think you're going to see soon um, where they added the mandatory, if you built a new house, you had two or three, even four points you had to add to your construction loan just to build a new home, to try and discourage people. Well, now you look at that Fed funds rate, how it goes up and down, up and down, and you start to look at the years, right? Like 2008, where it drastically came down. It starts to tell you a story of how the Fed, all they do are they're puppet masters. All yes. they're able to do is manipulate that uh, percentage and then, you know, shrink the money supply because how they shrink it is what people don't realize is how money is created is every time a loan is made. So if you want to slow money creation and shrink it, all you have to do is make it to where people it's unbearable to go and borrow money. How do you do that? You raise interest rates. So every time they raise interest rates, it shrinks the money supply. So now where Patrick has his, uh, finger right there was 2018 right before all this craziness in the world happened it sharply dropped but here's the scary thing and this word patrick's chart is very important as it sat right along that bottom plateau right there this is what's very important the money expansion was insane to say the least and now it is a it's almost like a force multiplier as that rate is going up in march of 2022 to now that cleanse cycle, you see the red line, how much sharper and taller it is as opposed to previous raises. Yes. It's because of the sheer volume of money now priced at a higher rate. And that's what I want people to understand. Is that correct, Patrick? That's right. And that's a good observation that you did. The angle, the angle, known as the angle of this acceleration, it's practically never been done before. This is uh, impressive. It's like in the 70s there, they've... Um, we had that type of angle of uh, rates increase, you know? Yeah. It's, and look uh, at, and if you look at the the angle in the seventies and the volatility of the ups and downs of the yeah. Fed funds rate in the seventies to say, and even the early eighties to say that that would cause confusion and panic in markets is an understatement. And that's why you want to be in hard assets like gold, in my opinion, because it's going to be an absolute travesty. And I know it sounds crazy because to look at how high that is compared to how low it is way in the future, but you have to look at how much money was created. Exactly. And that's why the ratio is super high. So much more money with low, low rates. Here you see Fed fund rates, 19%, but the ratio is not, not the ratio with the multiplier is not as high. The, uh, the total, the, the, the sum of them, the multiplied uh, debt versus Fed fund rate. Exactly. And that's because that's it was sustainable. It's kind of uh, so yeah, we got to use charts, Travis, and it shines light. So yeah, this I is super, agree. super scary stuff where they did the, this, uh, wherever we are, they, they keep hiking there. It's like, uh, whew, take a deep breath. And you see in the US equities, they're rolling over versus produced price index. Uh, NASDAQ has broken down, measured in gold. You could expect NASDAQ to lose like 80% of its value measured in hard assets, measured in gold, measured in silver. NASDAQ lost 92% from the dot-com bubble in nine years, all the way to uh, the abyss of 2009, it lost 92% of its value, the NASDAQ measuring gold. There's no reason why that's not going to happen again, once again. Yeah. Well, hey, let's do this. Let's make this a two-part because this is long enough interview because I want to actually talk about gold and silver with you. I want to talk about the euro. And so let's close this one out. Is there anything you want to say in closing on this one? No, that's great, guys. Go go follow me on Bad Charts 1 and uh, all these charts are there, guys. Enjoy. Awesome. Well, that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja and Patrick are out.